Well, welcome once again to another virtual Sunday School class. This class will be for Sunday, November 15th. So if you plan to join us for the discussion about today's Sunday School class, be sure to hop on Zoom at 10.15 a.m. and that'll run till about 10.40 a.m. on Sunday morning during the Sunday School hour. If you're just watching and for the first time perhaps, or you don't visit us on Sunday mornings, that's okay. If you want to join, you can. If you if you can't, but you like to follow along here, that's great as well. I have several of you who join us for the videos and may email me some questions, but aren't available during the Sunday school hour either because you're already here during Sunday school or you're not available during that time for whatever reason. I want to encourage all of you to be a part at whatever level you're available. But I want to mention this. We do unpack a lot of what we discuss in this particular time. Uh, there might be some hanging questions that I'll leave us with, or I'm not quite giving a lot of detail on purpose so that we have something to talk about during the Sunday School Hour. So I encourage you, if you can join, to be a part of that time together. I do want to do a little bit of housekeeping this morning before we get into the Sunday School Hour, just to kind of get things organized for this class. Things are going to be changing for this class in just a few weeks. Of course, the two Sundays after Thanksgiving and the two Sundays after Christmas, the church campus will not be open. We will be having virtual Sunday service online, and we will not be having virtual Sunday school because I will not be here at the church, and uh, I don't have good enough signal at the house to have a, a Zoom conference. Um, so I'll be watching along with everybody else on YouTube or Facebook, but we will not be having Sunday school virtually on those Sundays. Um, I'll be relaxing with my family and enjoying um, fellowship with them. I have to tell you, uh, just to be honest, I really enjoyed that time with my family because, you know, on Sunday mornings I'm working. So when we were virtual only, that was an enjoyable time. Having said that, I was longing to get back to the church and be a part of in-person worship. So I'm not excited to have these couple weeks off, but what's exciting about it is it's only two weeks at a time before we're back. So we'll have two weeks after Thanksgiving, we'll be off, then we'll be back in person, kind of catch our breath together, and then we'll enter the Christmas season, we'll have two more Sundays off. Um, we don't have any plans for long uh, shutdowns or really any other shutdowns beyond this. Depending on how the pandemic goes, we of course are gonna keep eyes on things, but we're just doing this as a safety precaution and we won't be having Sunday school during that time. Something else, though, that'll happen is when we come back after Christmas in January, um, my preaching schedule is going to change somewhat. Um, I'm going to be a little bit busier on Sundays, so this Sunday school class is going to have to uh, change a little bit. Now, what does that mean? I I'm not entirely sure. I probably won't have time for these lessons like we have um, we've been doing where I've been sitting down and talking. I'm going to try to do what I can, but if you have any comments or, or thoughts on maybe how we move forward virtually, um, we're hoping that virtual Sunday school won't last forever, but with the pandemic still looming, we'll have to see. Of course, there's some good news coming out of the science community, the medical community about vaccines and all, um, but we, we want to provide something, some gathering, but we may be having to study something um, together, maybe some other videos online that we find. If you have any ideas, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to talk to the staff. We'll come up with some plan for virtual Sunday school, but it won't look like this. So what have we been doing? Um, when this idea of virtual Sunday school began, and, and so what I want to really kind of do here is a, a little bit of review and a little bit of just discussing what we've been doing and why we've been doing it. So when the pandemic first began, I didn't realize how long this was going to go on, and we had this idea for this virtual Sunday school class. I think it was a, a great idea for us to have, but 
I really wasn't thinking long term when we started. I was thinking, well, the, the church is going to reopen for worship only. There won't be Sunday school class, so we need to provide something there. And then we had plans to soon open back Sunday school, but then we realized, well, this is a ministry that can continue on even while we're open again. Um, we may want to continue on with what we're we're doing virtually because some people still aren't comfortable coming or some people just enjoy uh, this time together. And I have. Even though I've been here at church, I've enjoyed our Sunday school hour together. So I was, when I first began, I didn't have some long-term goal, something to talk about. But what has happened is sort of a stream of consciousness. We began talking about the pandemic and how the church should respond or uh, how the church is responding and some of the foreshadowing we had seen in our culture and our church in, in America coming up to this point and how this has kind of been a winnowing. It has been a refining moment for the church. Uh, it has been a, a, a huge challenge and a test to the church. And in certain aspects, we, we can look at it and go, well, the church isn't doing so well. And I don't mean just College Place or I don't mean College Place in particular. I mean, the American church isn't doing that well because it's not really rebounding um, and, and the numbers are down and the giving is down and, and all of these things. And, and yet, this isn't surprising and this isn't unheard of in Christian history. The church has often gone through moments of refining and reshaping and, and looking, um, becoming introspective in times of stress and to find where, we're, where the places were fracturing. Because if the church is ever breaking down at any point, the weakness is not on God's end and God's promises. God says that his leadership of the church will always endure until the end of the age and that Jesus will always be the head of the church. So where those points of contact happen with stressors and where fissures and fractures and even outright breakdowns happen, um, those happen where humans have inserted ourselves too much and we're not listening uh, to God. So what do we do in a time such as this? Church has been rocking along for centuries, and, and, and America has been rocking along kind of as is for several decades in the evangelical world, and now we're under a test like we've never been, or at least haven't been in some time. The evangelical church is uh, feeling these pressures, and there's starting to be places where we're noticing some weaknesses. So what do you do? Well, you go back to the basics. You go back to looking at your identity, and what we have discussed in this class is that oftentimes, when the church discusses its identity in America, we leave out whole portions of Scripture. We often like to discuss ourselves being children of God, being persons who are saved by God, but we don't talk about saved for what end, or what is our vocation as children of God? What are we being renewed to daily to be growing in the image of God? Uh, this is something we, we don't discuss very often. And so we need to begin to uh, look at the areas of what are we being saved for. And salvation is free. Grace is free. But it doesn't leave us as we are. It changes us um, for vo God's vocation for us. And so what we see is that God's vocation for us is to bring us back into uh, being his representatives. God as the great king is calling citizens back to himself to be ambassadors in this world. Um, First Peter tells us that we are like aliens in this world, strangers in a land not our own, and that our job is to be representatives. So what we've been doing in the Sunday School Hour, if you haven't been with us, is we, we began to look at the, the breakdown of, of the church's response in the pandemic, how this is showing us some areas where we need to grow, uh, we see that, that more and more young people are not returning to church, and we're having to ask the question, what, what is it that, the, 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 uh, that people are looking for that the church isn't offering? And we could say, well, the world's just getting worldly, and it's the world's fault. But that's really never the case. Uh, our, the world's never supposed to make our job easy into getting people out of the world into, into the church, the Christian church. Uh, instead, we are... Uh, I don't want to say at war with the world, because we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. We wrestle with, with spiritual um, things, but, but there is a wrestling match 
between the culture of the world and what people of the world think we need and what the church is saying and what the kingdom of God is saying we need. And so there is this sort of um, battle for the hearts of people. Will you belong to the world or will you belong to the people of God? Um, so this is really kind of where we've been going. And we ended up looking at several passages to remind us that we're not just saved out of the world and sent to heaven when we die, as if this life is just about finding the fire escape to heaven, that Christ is just going to swoop us up and we don't really have anything to, anything to do here, um, and that the goal of life is just to be saved. No, we're saved for a purpose. God created us for a reason, and Christ is, even in this life, returning that reason to us, and that purpose is to be his representative. So we looked at that from the lens of creation and Adam and Eve, all the way uh, through the scriptures. And so basically where we've been going is that we've been discussing that we're kingdom citizens. Okay, kingdom citizens. What does it mean to live for the kingdom of God? Well, that's kind of the question we've been asking for several weeks now. And I've been wanting to look at some of the parables about the kingdom of God, but because this is a Sunday school class and I don't want it to feel as if we're boxed in and we have to do the lesson, I want this to feel like a discussion because several of you have asked me questions about what we're learning. We haven't gotten to the parables and we might not get to them by the time that we finish this segment because that's not the point. The point is to ask, uh, are, do we understand who we are? And by us asking questions, we get deeper into that answer. I just I had an idea of where I wanted the discussion to go, but a discussion is two ways. And so I am responding to you. This class is kind of going with the stream of consciousness of the entire class, not just me as the teacher. I'm not going to try to, to just control the ship on my own and tell you exactly what I think you need to hear. Instead, I want to hear from you, and I'm very grateful that I have heard from you. So some of you were asking a little bit more about what does it mean to be ambassadors for the kingdom of God. With that, I'm going to pause for just a moment because we only have about 10 minutes left uh, to discuss, but my computer battery is, is dying. So I'm going to pause for a moment, be right back. You won't even notice. It'll be like blip, blip, and I'll be back. Okay, so I know, I know. Uh, I was wrong. I said you wouldn't even notice the difference. But uh, yeah, I had to move because I don't have a great um, place to plug in near my desk. Um, I was rearranging some things, so... I've got to get my power strip back over there and realized I don't want to spend all that time getting huh, off base and, and not remembering where I was. Um, so I'm, I've moved, and, and something that I just realized is, you know, I've got this whiteboard here. I might probably use it today, but I might, I might um, in future Sunday school classes, utilize my whiteboard a little bit. I'm kind of a, a sucker for a whiteboard. I love teaching from a whiteboard. So where were we before I had to uh, scramble to get my power back going to my computer before it shut off? Well, we're discussing um, our identity in, as, as citizens of the kingdom of God, and we're wondering what does that mean. And we said, well, it just means it means really that we represent God. We're, while if we are Christians, we live in this world as representatives of the kingdom of God. And, and uh, I use this analogy, and I might have used it, I think I've used it here in the Sunday School class, but I'll remind you, because I was having this very discussion with my daughter Audrey just this week. We've been studying Scripture together, and I said, do you know what an ambassador is? Because uh, Paul refers to himself as an ambassador of the kingdom of God. Well, an ambassador is someone who lives in a foreign country. Um, they have an embassy, and they'll have, you know, they'll have, they'll, They'll live there on the, on that, on the grounds, usually. And, and when you go to visit the ambassador and you're in his or her home, uh, you're not, if, especially if, like, so let's say that, you know, you know, go to a uh, foreign country's embassy in, the, in Washington, D.C. Well, there's nothing more, you know, there's, some more, there's nothing more American about what you see around you than some of the, the monuments in Washington, D.C., you're fully integrated into an American society, uh, a United States um, society, and all about you are reminders of who you are, right? You are, in America, 
uh, you see the, found, the founding fathers, monuments everywhere, uh, monuments to the great heroes um, that have fought in, in wars for us to protect our freedom. There's no doubt when you're in Washington, D.C. that you're going to be reminded of your heritage. But as soon as you step into an embassy or you visit an ambassador in his home, all of a sudden you enter into a different world. They're not going to decorate uh, their homes with Americana. They're not. They are there not to represent the United States. They are there to represent to the United States their homeland. So when you step into their homeland, you're going to get some offerings of their culture. They'll probably have food there from their homeland. They'll probably have staff there around uh, speaking in the language of their homeland. They'll probably have decorations about uh, of their homeland, things from back home. So that when you enter into that world, they're offering to you a picture of their culture. And then that way you can understand, well, how do, how do, we, how do our cultures work together? And here you have this, this picture of their kingdom within our kingdom, just to use biblical terms. I know we're not a kingdom, but the kingdoms are existing together and, and, co and coinciding. Now, it's kind of like that when it comes to the church. The church is an active community that when you come into our midst, and that doesn't mean into our buildings, although hopefully our buildings would represent this, but when you come into our midst, so when you come into a contact with believers, what you're supposed to experience is not the ways of the world, where there's backbiting and cheating and name-calling and stealing and, and, you know, just humans looking out for themselves. You should enter into a church setting, if you're surrounded by believers, where everybody is looking out for the interest of others. Why? Well, that's because that's what the kingdom of God is like. That's what I mean when I say we need to steward well um, our role as ambassadors of the kingdom of God. We are royal representatives. We are ambassadors. So if you think about it this way, you have the kingdom of God over here, and you have the world over here. Uh, the kingdom of God is where God fully rules and reigns, and you have the world, which is the, uh, the realm of present evil, where, where sin and death reign. And Jesus has interjected, has infiltrated, has broken into the world uh, with the kingdom of God. He's brought the kingdom of God with him so that wherever there are people who accept God's spirit and God's life, and where the kingdom breaks into their world, and they become citizens of the kingdom, the kingdom is there amongst them. But one day, the kingdom of God is going to fully take over and become all in all. And it's going to, it's going to redeem everything and make all things new. But until then, the church is an outpost. We are like the embassy, or we are like the ambassadors living in a foreign land. Peter actually makes this argument. So, so if you've been wondering, kind of, what, what do you mean live for the kingdom of God? What does it mean to really be royal representatives, uh, to be the heirs of God's kingdom, but living here so that we are God's royalty, but we're, we're not living in the kingdom of God yet. Well, that means that while we're here, we represent God well. We don't live like the world. So anytime the church gets caught up in what the world gets caught up in, we got to look at those areas where we have, where we fail to be an obedient church, and we need to bring the kingdom of God back in and let Christ in his spirit work through us. And I think the pandemic has done some of that for us. It has shown us where our areas of fear and weakness reside. Uh, it, it, and and even, even in times of when we get to like uh, seasons like we're in now, where not only are we in a pandemic, but we're always in the high tension seasons whenever there's a political race going on. And I have to be honest with you, every time a political race happens, you hear Christians saying, oh, well, this, is, this is not going well. Um, and, and I mean, you know, Christians on both sides. So you hear Christians who uh, see, see, you know, the elected officials coming out or, or laws changing, or rules changing, and, and all of a sudden we get, oh, it all, it all is lost, and it's kind of chicken little stuff. Well, but we're not, see, this isn't our home. Now, we are uh, very blessed to be here. And the Bible is very clear that wherever you find yourself as a Christian, because Christians are citizens of all the kingdoms of the world, there's Christians all over the globe, wherever you find yourself, 
work for the benefit of that that kingdom and that nation and for the for the betterment of that nation because if it goes well for that nation it'll go well for us as Christians so the Bible doesn't say well America's not your home so you don't have to care about it that's not what I'm saying at all but what I am saying is when things aren't going the way we want we have to have an eternal perspective and that's easier said than done because what happens is is we say oh well I don't really care but then, if you look at Facebook and how Christians are acting there, name-calling, um, uh, just angry, and, and, and not representing the kingdom of God very well. Um, Christians have to live differently. And sometimes, it would be easier to cheat. It would be easier to steal. It would be easier to lie to get our way. We, 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 sometimes it would be easier if our officials would just you know, cheat the system and, and, and get get what we want in place, but we can't live that way. And so if we live to the best of our ability, and yet the world's not going the way we want, that that is, we've done nothing wrong. God is in control, and uh, we have to trust in Him. But God is at work doing miraculous things um, and through the church, through the church. So let's look at 1 Peter uh, chapter 2, verse... Uh, verses 11 through 12. Beloved, I urge you as aliens and exiles to abstain from the desires of the flesh that wage war against your soul. Conduct yourselves honorably among the Gentiles. Now, Peter, of course, speaking to a Jewish world, they would hear this as, as people of God live differently in the world around you, the pagans or the non-believers or whoever. So in the church, we would see this as, as church members live honorably among the world around you. So that they, uh, though they malign you as evildoers, they may see your honorable deeds and glorify God when he comes to judge. In other words, by us living the way that we live, we become a testimony to who God is. And while at first the people who see us living for the kingdom of God might say, no, that doesn't make any sense, or I don't like that, or that's, that's not good, whatever. They, they look at Christians and say, your ways are old, antiquated, or even evil. Um, by us continuing to live them out, by us continuing to love others, they may turn from their evil ways and turn to God. That that's really it. Um, that's really that's really the key to who we're called to be. But too often in the church, we think that our only goal is to make sure we get people to um, give their life to Christ, and then we make them jump through some hoops. And that's not really giving our life to Christ. If we, we can give our life to Christ freely, we don't have to earn our salvation, but when we give it to him, he's going to do something with it. So if we find it, we say, we, we think, you know, we see people who say, well, I gave my life to Christ, but they live like hell. Well, did they really, have we really given our life to Christ? We have to, as a church, examine ourselves. What are we asking people to do? What are we, what are we calling people to do? And what we're inviting them into is not just a fire escape. Hey, come to the church, and then when you die, you get to go to heaven. Well, that's, that's, a part of it that that uh, receiving becoming a part of Christ's body or the church if we really truly are part of that body not just because we attend church but because we we have entered into um, his family well yeah we get to live with God forever and ever but that's not the chief end of Scripture Scripture is calling us back to a purpose and a vocation so what we're inviting people into is meaning and purpose to live for God here and now living out of our identity, and the church needs to reclaim that. We, 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 we got to get back to that basic truth that we're here for a purpose, and we're here to love God and love others. See you Sunday.